Hi everyone, my name is Sonia. About a year ago, I encountered something that I wasn't introduced to, that my mom and sisters didn't prepare me for, but it's something that every girl goes through. You know what I mean, right? Those days. It came at the most inopportune time, and it was a day I will definitely never forget. To make this easier on you and me, I'll call that day pomegranate juice, so it's clear and not so embarrassing. I'm sure many of the girls watching my video right now immediately remember the first time pomegranate juice came, or maybe some don't know what it is yet. Now, I was an ignoramus too. My mom never talked to me about those topics, while my sisters were very careful. I didn't even notice hygiene products in the bathroom. I was 12 years old at the time. We had a staged scene at school where I played the role of a princess or something. I had the lead role. My whole big family, including my grandparents and even my aunts and uncles, came to see me play. I was dressed in a gorgeous white dress with beautiful hair and makeup done by my sisters. In the midst of the scene, a small act was announced so the actors had time to change and have a little snack. I remember going to the dressing room and eating and eating. It was the first time I felt so rabidly hungry. After about 10 minutes, I had a stomach ache, so I went to the bathroom, but it didn't help. My stomach was incredibly tight and my lower back hurt like hell. After another couple of minutes, I realized it was only getting worse, but we were already being called to the stage, so I straightened up and went on to play the part. I sang a song, then sat on a bench, waiting for my prince, and then I felt as if I had peed myself. My eyes rolled back from surprise, my hands were shaking, and I began to forget my words. I looked at the scene before me, but I couldn't see my mother because the light from the spotlight was shining right in my face. My prince came up to me, began to sing, and I should have answered him, but I couldn't. I was silent. I was already being told the words of the song from backstage. The music played and played, and the prince's eyebrows furrowed and lips pressed together and I got up from the bench, panting, and continued singing. But as my prince spun me into a dance, I heard an <gasps> from the audience. I could see my mom's face, my dad's eyes closed, and my sisters giggled. I looked down at the back of my dress and noticed a pomegranate stain there. My prince looked at me with weeping eyes and was like, Are you dying? What? No! No! Oh no, no, I don't want to die! I cried and ran off the stage and went straight to the bathroom, sat on the toilet and cried my eyes out. There was a knock on the door. Go away! It's occupied! Can't you see? Daughter, it's me. Please let me in. No, I won't let you in. I don't want you to see me like this. Like what? Ugly, humiliated, and destroyed. Mom, I don't want to die. What kind of nonsense is that? No one has ever died of pomegranate days. What days? Pomegranate days, that's what they're called. I stopped blubbering and sniffling, calmed down, and then asked again. You mean everyone has pomegranate days? I should have told you about it, I just didn't know how. Yes, dear, everyone has those days, and it's not fatal. I opened the door and said, Why didn't you tell me? I would have been prepared then. I wouldn't have embarrassed myself in front of the whole school. My uncles and grandparents saw me. Mom, you ruined my life. Mom tried to calm me down, but it was no use. I ran out of the bathroom, wrapped in my mom's jacket. Even though I got in the car quickly, I was still spotted by some school kids who started teasing me, calling me leaky. It was horrible. For the next two weekends, I lay in bed crying. Not only did my stomach hurt, I also had to run to the bathroom to check if everything was lying there properly. I mean, the hygiene products. My sister would come into my room, but I would tell them off right away. I don't need your comforting and advice. You should have warned me about these things, I yelled. I felt bad, but then it only got worse. At lunch, my mother and my sister started to talk about their first times, and I listened to them, pretending I wasn't interested. And then my sister said, Well, nothing, everyone has a first time. You'll get used to it, she said. What? What do you mean, get used to it? Will they always be like this? 
All your life, baby. Well, up to 45 to 50 years at best. At best? Are you kidding me? What's the best case scenario? It would be better not to have them at all. Ugh! I yelled again and ran to my room. Oh god, her hormones are just playing out. It's okay, she'll get used to it. We all become megapolis from time to time. No, no, our sister is always a mega. That's because she hasn't had pomegranate juice for a long time. Too many problems for women. I'm going to the movies with Harry. Bye, everyone. While my family ate dinner, I looked at myself crying in the mirror and couldn't believe I was going to spend my whole life this way. It was horrible. The next day, as soon as I walked into school, the kids were screaming. The leak is here. Did you bring a diaper with you so you wouldn't scare us anymore? How many minutes do you have left to live? Those kinds of questions were killing me. I walked into class and there was a huge pad painted on my seat with a pomegranate stain with my name on it. What the hell is that? Who did this? My classmate George came out of the crowd with a smug face and said so haughtily, It's a collector's item. Like it? You mean collector's work? Whatever. You're as dumb as a cork. And you're bleeding juice. So who's really winning here? Oh, shush, you stupid head. It's normal for girls. My mom doesn't have it. Oh, well, your mom hasn't had it for a long time because she's so old. Everyone fell silent and then chuckled quietly. Yeah, George was her son, that mean neighbor of ours, and he was kind of the coolest boy in the class, and I was so good at shutting him up. George was pissed off, and he decided to get back at me. Right after we went out to lunch, George sprayed red paint on my ass and yelled that the leak was leaking again. I jumped on him, wanted to scratch his face all over, but we were both sent to the principal's office. It was horrible. We got a hearing for our behavior, and then the principal told us that there was a meeting in the auditorium after school today. There were a bunch of people there, not just our class, but all the others followed too. Some unfamiliar woman came into the hall. She introduced herself as a doctor and said that today, she would tell us a little about the female body. I knew right away what she meant. Hello, students. My name is Dr. Tiffany Morrill, and I was invited to you today by your principal to share with you some knowledge about the female body. I have heard a rumor that your school shames girls who have entered adulthood, and that is absurd and stupid. Only incompetent and stupid children do this. But you are adults, aren't you? She began her speech, and we all listened to her with great interest. During the lecture, we learned that pomegranate juice is not a disease, but a natural process that comes to girls and women every month. The first pomegranate juice comes normally from ages 11 to 14. At first, they may be irregular, but over time, the cycle is established. The pomegranate cycle is the period from the first day of pomegranate juice to the first day of the next pomegranate juice for each woman. It varies for everyone, but on average, it lasts between 21 and 35 days. The pomegranate juice itself goes from 3 to 7 days. During this time, the body normally loses no more than 30 to 50 milliliters of blood. The discharge may contain clots. This is normal. Slight pulling pain in the abdomen is a normal phenomenon during pomegranate juice said the doctor, and then she talked about the rules of hygiene. You know, no one laughed during her lecture. We understood that the information is important, and I even wrote some of it down. I realized that what happens to me is not shame and humiliation. It is a normal process, and it happens to everyone. It's too bad that some boys don't understand that and make you the center of pranks, jokes, and ridicule. George came up to me afterward. Hey, Leaky. What? You're right. I'm sorry, please. To be honest, I got scared when I saw that, so I started laughing at you. I thought I might get it too, until the doctor told me. I didn't know much about it either, but apology accepted. Peace. Peace. We made up. And to you, friends, I tell you this for a reason. Maybe there are others here like me who are ignorant and inexperienced. I want you to be prepared if it's your first time, not like most of my classmates. So, good luck to you. Share your stories with me. Hi, hi. My name is Chloe. I had a guy named Lucas. We loved each other. Our relationship was bright and our feelings were crazy. He was my first love, but circumstances were too much for us and we had to break up, all because he was my school doctor. 
and much older than me. Everyone found out about him and me, and he was going to jail. Subscribe and watch other animations. After all, we still have a lot of interesting stories. So, I was in high school at the time. I was very good looking, and everyone always wondered why I didn't have a boyfriend. It was simple. I didn't like anyone. I will not say that the taste is capricious. The fact is that I have lived in our small city since birth. And of course, everyone here knows each other. Who breathes what, who walks with whom. And I didn't want to date anyone I knew. And so the new school year came, which meant that we had to go to school. This year, the director started his meeting with a small announcement. It turns out that we now have a psychologist at the school, Mr. Van Lucas. This was decided by the management on the recommendation of the mayor's office. The adults think that it will be necessary for our classes because our last year at school promises to be especially busy and nervous, and we are going to go to college. So the doctor said that each of us should go to the psychologist's office and share our experiences. I, like many others, considered this nonsense and successfully forgot. A month after the start of school, the real load began, which was discussed. I decided for myself which college I would go to. I wanted to go to another city and train as a designer. But my mother was against it, so I applied in secret from her. Once when I went home, my mother was waiting for me in a rage. She looked in the mail and saw a reply from the college. Yes, I got in! Only she saw it and was furious. I thought this was the end. She screamed at the top of her voice. I told you that the theme of the designer is closed. You will get a job as an economist in our city, and you will not go anywhere. You will stay with me, she shouted. But I didn't want to get stale in a place where everyone knows when you brushed your teeth or when you last went to the movies. I'm sick of it. I wanted to try life outside all of this and away from my ever-controlling mother. As you can imagine, there was a scandal at home. She was too hurt that I had decided my fate for myself. Therefore, the punishment was as strict as possible. No walking, pocket money, internet, and TV for a month. After a huge scandal, I went to school and told my friends about it. The most annoying thing is that their parents, unlike my mother, were not against their choice. Do I have to do something I don't like? But my friends did not know the answer to this question and recommended to contact our school psychologist. At the time, the idea didn't seem so crazy. After school, I knocked on the door to his office. Come in, the doctor said. I opened the door and saw an incredibly beautiful young man standing in front of me. He was attractive. Tall, dark, with beautiful eyes. Neat with a dizzying smell of perfume. We said hello, and he introduced himself as Dr. Van Lucas, he said. Chloe Jones, I said. I confess I was so taken aback at the sight of him. I thought our psychologist was some fat, boring old doctor. Not this handsome guy. Unbeknownst to me, I began to ask him about where he came from and about his impressions of the city. Our conversation was more like a friendly one. I lost track of time and didn't notice an hour had passed, and we didn't talk about our problem. In his office, someone knocked on the door. It was another student recorded at the time to him. He coughed and said to come back tomorrow. I walked home, still remembering this unusual session. Either this was his professional approach to get closer to a person, or I did not seem to like our mutual sympathy. I couldn't sleep all night, and I wanted to get back to him as soon as possible. The next day, we chatted again about everything but my problem. Doc told me about himself. Then we discussed the latest movies, my hobby. It was great. Over time, our sessions began to feel like a pleasant habit rather than a necessity. One day after another argument with my mother, I left the house in the evening. I decided to get some air, take a little walk down the street. I was upset and didn't expect to see Mr. Van in my neighborhood. Before I knew it, he came up to me and asked me what had happened, and I looked into his eyes and said nothing. I don't remember kissing him. My heart almost jumped out of my chest. 
We stood there for a long time with our arms around each other, unable to get enough of each other. That's how we started dating, secretly. We kept this secret for about six months. During this time, we became even closer. No one knew about our crazy affair. He would arrange dates in the country, and we would go out in the evening so no one would see us. And one only time we decided to go to the movies together, and when we came out after the session, we were kissing in the parking lot, the school principal came up to us. Naturally, the next day I was called into the office with him, and rumors spread throughout the school. We were the subject of gossip. My mother was even more furious than usual. We were both shamed at the meeting. My mother promised to put my boyfriend in jail, and I was hysterical. And no matter how much I screamed that I loved him, no one cared. I'll quit. I'll quit and move to another city. Just don't exclude Chloe from school, he said suddenly. The director and his parents agreed. It was then that I was broken into a thousand pieces. My dearest love, my first love, was taken from me. Lucas left as promised. We didn't even say goodbye. I continued my studies. This year was the most beautiful and terrible year of my life at the same time. We sacrificed our feelings for each other. I guess that's what real lovers do. What do you think?